Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another daily Marvel Snap video. So today we are back on Sulky Hulky, our free-to-play account, who has gotten all the way up to collection log level 1172. Um, currently this season we're still sitting right around 49, um, which I know that it cuts off. I can move it up just to show it. Um, so 49, and then we have 75 credits left. We have 3,250 gold. And so we have a decent stockpile of gold, but I think we're going to save it until um, like global release. Then maybe we start refreshing our credits. Maybe if we start pushing on the Sulky Hulky really hard, uh, maybe at that point we start spinning it down. But right now I want to go completely free to play where all of the rewards that we get as far as gold, um, we don't spend them. In the long run, it always is going to be efficient to refresh your... Uh, your daily missions if you can complete them and then if not doing the credit purchases in the store is also just as efficient the only upside you get from from mission refreshes is that you get more completion on your weekly challenges and you get a little bit of season pass xp so that you can complete the season pass more quickly even if you don't buy into it so that you can get to the free reserves down at the bottom past level 50. but we have four reserves that we're able to pull so we are into the portion of the collection track where it could take nine reserves before we get one but we do have quite a few under our wing so we should get at least one card here let's hope that we get a decently impactful one that can really swing or potentially impact the game that we want to build around and so we get zero a zero zero is a pretty good card in certain scenarios um, but just not as a standalone build card he's more of a support style card um, and so ooh, we get hazmat we could do some things with hazmat um it's more so with like hazmat wong and then the goblins is, is what we could do but um we could we could try to do something with hazmat but it's it's a little bit difficult wong and odin are really really useful to, for making this card effective either that or the exodia combo uh maybe we can pull one more here no um we don't get lucky unfortunately all right and so we do have one more collector's reserve to pull Honestly, that's not bad. Um, previously, I would have been really upset about pulling Ronin, but that is pretty big. Uh, Ronin is really, really good right now. All right, and so since we didn't really get anything polarizing or build around worthy, um, potentially Ronin at the very end, um, but because we didn't get anything otherwise that is just incredibly polarizing to build around, we're going to use Magneto. Magneto is a pretty unique six cost card in that he will move opposing three and four cost cards out of that lane to readjust where the opponent's power is. So now sometimes this can really stab you in the back. It's not always ideal, but to be able to kind of help ourselves make sure that it's ideal, we can drop a storm on three followed by a four cost on four, ideally Jessica Jones most likely the opponent will respond with a four cost card if they have one into the storm location if they're going to play in the storm location magneto is going to be able to pull that out so that we can easily steal away that lane or that location and then we just have to focus on winning one of the other ones and so if we do a play line if we don't do anything else for the beginning of the game and we do a play line like storm on three jessica jones that same lane on four we do iron man into the lane that we're going to be dropping magneto on five and then magneto on six a lot of times that 24 power in that lane might be enough to win it for us depending on what that location is where the opponent's cards lie um, but it is a very viable play path now this deck is going to offer some kind of flexibility we have early game in our sunspot nightcrawler angela and scorpion and lizard um, followed by the late game power pushes of uh, our iron man our claw magneto and then infinite if we are running Sunspot, and let's say we get Sunspot locked behind the Storm location, that allows us to pass on turn 5, we can buff up that location just enough to get it over that edge, and then on 6 we can drop a 20 power play, which is going to be huge. And so running through the decklist really quickly, first up we have Sunspot. Sunspot is going to be a pretty versatile 1 cost card, especially if we lock him behind a lane. Normally I don't like using Sunspot in a, a standard list, but whenever you're running lockdown locations, so things such as Professor X or Storm, and you get him placed into a lane that is either locked down or can't be accessed very easily after that point, he offers a very unique power push or board presence in those areas. And then next up we have Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is another part of our early game power push. We can either play this onto the board, we can wait and drop this after we drop an Angela. Sometimes we're not gonna have Storm on three. Nightcrawler is going to be able to buff Angela up, we'll be able to move him out after the fact, and then buff her up further. He, he offers a decent amount of power push in this list, 
and we're going to be able to move him potentially over into the storm lane if we need just a little bit of extra power in that location. And then we have Angela. Angela is going to be great to either drop in a lane by herself on two, followed by a storm on three. Then at that point, maybe we don't even need to invest the, the resources of Jessica Jones. Maybe we do four, five, and six into a separate lane, allow Magneto to pull those cards out of the stormed location and sneak away an easy win. But that all starts with the Angela kind of snowball effect of her being able to buff herself up each time a card is played in that lane. And then we have Scorpion. Scorpion is going to offer a unique amount of disruption. At two cost, two power, he's okay, but he may potentially hit their Jubilee, which then becomes a zero power presence. He might hit a Mystique or an Iron Man, which can really mess with those multiplicative effects that those ongoing cards have. And then we have Lizard. Lizard is actually going to be okay. So if we drop Lizard on two, Storm on three, or maybe we drop Storm on three and then follow that up with both an Angela and a Lizard, we're going to be able to get a decent power push in that lane with those two cards. And in a Storm location, it's a lot less likely that the, that the opponent is going to be able to play four cards and max out that board space to trigger Lizard's ongoing effect. And then we have Storm. Storm is going to be the main component at locking down a lane. We could run a Professor X in this list, but I, it just feels like at that point in the game, if you are already winning that location, you're you're probably going to win it by the end of the game. Um, and so locking it down without some kind of cheat mechanic felt eh, okay, but it didn't feel great. So we ended up cutting that for an Iron Man, for a Claw, so that we can push power into multiple lanes with that turn five play. But our lockdown piece is Storm in this list by being able to limit the amount of times or turns that an opponent can play cards into a particular location. And then next up we have Enchantress. Ongoing abilities are absolutely all over the place right now. Um, so if you are into pool three already, a lot of times you're gonna be seeing those Mr. Negative lists, those Devil Dinos, those Ronins, or even just regular Wong abilities, Iron Man abilities. Enchantress is going to be able to offer a, a unique perspective in being able to counter those. Um, so Patriot decks, Cerebro decks. Enchantress has a lot of really good targets and ongoings are really popular right now. And so she's gonna have quite a bit of upside from this list. And then next up we have Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones is going to have the owner reveal ability if you don't play a card here next turn, plus four power. She's gonna be a really good resource to follow up in a storm location um, because she's gonna be almost unbeatable at that four cost slot. And if that's the last turn that cards can be played there, we can easily trigger her on reveal ability, allowing her to be eight power instead of four. And then we have Iron Man. If we lock down the storm location, the question then becomes how do we win a second lane? Iron Man is going to be here to help us do that. And then we have Claw. Sometimes you're just going to need to push power into a hard to reach location. Maybe we might need a little bit of extra push into that storm lane. Claw is going to be able to offer a nine power presence onto the board between his two lanes. He offers four in the lane that he's played in and then six into the other one. Um, and this can be multiplied if he's played on something like an Onslaught Citadel, where it becomes 12 power to that other lane. His upside increases with that type of play. Uh, but most of the time at nine power, he's a decent board presence in kind of spreading that power across the board. And then we have Magneto. Magneto is going to be our disruption tool in this list. If we drop Storm on Curve, a lot of times Magneto is going to have a really good potential target on turn six for pulling that card out of the storm lane and then of course we still have to overcome that power level but it makes it a lot harder for them to anticipate that we're going to be yanking that power from them and then finally we have infinite infinite in this list sometimes is going to be the play we don't have a way to cheat him out onto the board but i think that's completely fine some games we may have Sunspot stuck behind the Storm location. By skipping, we're going to be able to strategically push some power into that hard to reach lane. And then after that, on turn six, we can drop a 20 power play, which is going to be really, really big. Um, being able to drop Infinite naturally into, onto the board a lot of times offers a really good board presence. And sometimes you can even bluff if you don't have Infinite in, in your hand and you skip turn five. Sometimes the opponent will anticipate that you're going to drop Infinite. And if they can't beat that, then they end up retreating. But that is the rundown of the deck list. We are going to go ahead and jump into a few games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right. So first up, we have Short Sword. First location is Mindscape, which is going to be one that we probably will want to target with a storm if we draw into it. Um, we're we're going to skip Nightcrawler on turn one just in case we draw into Angela. Um, but otherwise, we will probably play Scorpion on two and then see what we draw into to play on three. And so let's go ahead and play Scorpion into the Mindscape. Let's see if maybe we can draw into Storm. That would be the perfect top deck for turn three um, because then we'll be able to follow it up with the Jessica Jones. Even if they have a pretty big push, um, we'd be able to outpower them pretty easily. But we don't. We get the Lizard, so that's not, that's not great. Um, but I do think we push 
we start pushing our power onto the board, we can always readjust our lizard into New York if we want to. Um, and with the nature of Bucky Barnes, they're probably going to destroy it. I mean, capping out the location for them feels like it would be kind of be bad. Okay, and so we're going to play Jessica Jones into the Mindscape location. It, we are going to be able to move her over into New York if we need to readjust her. Um, and so I don't think it's necessarily an issue. After this turn, after turn five, Strange Academy would have either pushed it over here or here. Um, so I don't think it necessarily matters that we played her directly here because um, we'll be able to get some unique upside after this turn. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and move our Nightcrawler over into New York. I'm going to play Claw, which will push power sideways. We are going to change cards after this turn and so they're going to get our infinite which they probably won't be able to play a magneto which is going to be pretty decent it'll be able to pull or impact our um our jessica jones which oh my gosh i played in the location which is awful um we didn't allow jessica jones ability to trigger so it was a, a little bit of an oversight we, sh we needed to um let that one sink in uh, but unfortunately we did not let that happen all right so we have a couple of like kind of low cost cards I think we move some of our resources over here. Um, Red Skull will give all of them a plus two bonus. And so let's say we have the real Mysterio here. That becomes a 25 power lane, um, which is still not great, especially if they end up destroying that one. So maybe we don't go with, maybe we don't go with that play. All right, so I'm gonna go with something a little bit strange. We're gonna play Sunspot into Strange Academy. Um, we're gonna leave Jessica Jones here. We are gonna play an additional five power token with Mysterio into Mindscape. I think we probably end up losing this one, but we're gonna let it play out. We're gonna see what this looks like. Um, maybe we can find ourselves in some upside. I bet they play Magneto here, which will pull our Jessica Jones over. We probably should have taken that into consideration or calculation um, whenever we made our play. But I do think we win the left lane. I think we still win the left lane after Mysterio reveals. Um, our Sunspot will grow over the 12th power, so we actually win the left and the right lane. Even though we messed up by not letting Jessica Jones, Jessica Jones trigger, we were able to have enough of a power push, largely thanks to the Claw pushing power over into this middle location. We were able to have enough power that we were able to overcome the Magneto play um, and win two locations somehow. Not a bad first game. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one. We're still working out the kinks of the deck list. But overall, it feels pretty solid so far. Um, let's jump into the next one and see if we can keep it going. All right, so next up we have Segreteza. I feel like I murdered that name. I'm so sorry. So we're going to play Scorpion into the far right lane. We're going to try and impact as many cards as possible. So we get four cards that now have a negative one power level, which is going to be pretty decent. We may not know it just yet, but it could be the difference between winning and losing here. And so Asgard is the middle location. Let's go ahead and play our Lizard. Maybe we hope that we draw into... Actually, we can play Jessica Jones next turn. And then as long as we skip playing there on turn four, we'll be able to... Oh, the murder world is kind of unfortunate. As long as we don't play there next turn, we'll be fine. Jessica Jones will um, trigger her own reveal ability. And maybe that'll be enough to win the location. I do kind of plan on entirely skipping turn five. That way we can play the infinite onto the board on five, uh, courtesy of the super flow energy. And then on six, we can do something like Magneto or um, whatever else we have at that point. Okay, so they do a Jubilee pool that goes into magic. And so they actually extend the game. Interesting. So we are going to turn seven. This may be a Mr. Negative list. And if so, then the Enchantress is going to be incredibly important for us here. Let's go ahead and skip turn four. On turn five, we will play the Infinite. Um, I think we're okay not playing the Sunspot this turn. It feels bad, but um, I think it is what it is to to a certain degree and so let's go ahead and snap i know that they have mr negative kind of queued up um they have to with them with them i mean i mean they haven't played it and so they have to have some really strong cards lined up but if we can draw into enchantress by turn seven we can always swing a lane in our favor if they're relying on uh, iron man to win it for them we'll be able to swing it in our favor much more easily so they have blue marvel so that's going to be a halfway decent target um, for us to do an Enchantress, but we'll, we'll kind of play it out and wait and see what the overall power of it looks like. And so let's go with a Magneto play into Limbo. That is going to force them to pull their Bishop over here. It will be capped out. We'll be able to re reliably tell how much and what power level they have. Um, so then we can know what we need to play where on turn seven. All right, so they play three cards onto the board. Um, our Magneto is not able to pull the Bishop over, unfortunately. Uh, because they do cap out that location. They use a Mystique, which then copies the Iron Man's ability in Murder World. So that's going to be an interesting one, um, deciding where we should potentially play the, the Enchantress. 
Um, I think could be, I think it could be big. Uh, so we get a, we get an Iron Man of our own. They can't push any more power here. We we still win this location as is. Um, we're fine, right? Um, because we're gonna have forty a lot. <laughs> we're gonna have forty something. Um, we've already snapped, or else we would snap at this point. We just have to hope that they let us let, let us finesse the four cubes away, or maybe even hope that they snap back. I don't think they do. With what kind of given that this version of the Iron Man kind of goes unused because they're not going to be able to push additional power here. And so let's go ahead and I guess lock it in. I think they've probably locked theirs in. I gave them a fair enough amount of time. They're going to have a decent power push of, of 40, a 42, 44, 46. Oh, it's getting worse by the second. Um, I think we can still beat 46. I hope. Um, so we have 24, so it's 48. Ooh, that was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. When I saw the mist, and when I saw the Iron Man on top of the Infinot, I thought it, I thought we had it hands down. Um, but their ten power Bishop, their eight power Wolfsbane, absolutely massive. Almost was able to do it, but we are, but we were able to pull out the second win. So that is two and zero, oh, um, both for four cubes. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one. See if we can repeat it. Oh, all right. So next up we have Side Reel. And the first location is Muir Island, which is going to be pretty decent. We can stack like an Angela, a Scorpion, uh, maybe a couple other cards there so that they can get buffed up over time. It's either that or we play into the vault, but I think we start stacking the power early. Um, Muir Island is a really snowball style location, so we want to push power there early so that we can get the most upside out of it. Ooh, wow, these locations are kind of, kind of spicy. So let's go ahead and go with a... We're, we're going to go ahead and snap. From here, we're going to play Storm into the Kiln location. That will end up locking down Kiln, or turning it into a flooded location. Next turn, we'll play Jessica Jones into the Kiln location. That should be enough to give us the win here. Our Angel is going to keep buffing up over time. On 5, we can do Iron Man. On 6, we can do um, something else. But I think, especially with them having a Deadpool deck list, that's going to make it hard for them to win, win Kiln. The Vault becomes a little bit difficult because they won't be able to play cards there on turn 6. Um, so they're going to have to rely on Muir Island. And so if we can have like an Iron Man and a Magneto, um, it's going to be really hard to come over that power level. So let's go ahead and play the Jessica Jones. I was considering playing Jessica Jones into Muir Island, but I think we're fine. Um, I don't think they can push more than 10 power into the flooded lane. Okay, and so they use the hood, so they're going to have a 6 power demon token. Um, and then they have a little bit of power into the vault. That's okay, we're not working towards winning the vault. We are going to go all in into Muir Island, and I think we should get a decent upside from it. We're going to have Iron Man, we can then do Magneto, which will potentially pull their Deathlock over. Um, which just does feel kind of bad. Um, but at this point, I think it is what it is. We we go ahead and accept it. Ooh, and so they play a couple more cards over into the vault location. Interesting. So they go pretty heavy into the vault. Um, all the while, we go pretty heavy into Muir Island. We will still potentially pull either the Sabretooth or the Deathlock over. Or if they drop a card there that caps out this location... Um, at that point, maybe we don't pull anything over. It just depends on what they drop here. Um, and so, yeah, we did have the Magneto. No matter what they dropped, if it was a Taskmaster, it's not going to be enough. Um, if we pulled their Deathlock over, it'd be end up being like 26. With the 12 power, that's going to be another 14. That's going to be another 28 power on top of the 16. Um, and then we get double the triggers from the Muir Island because of, because of Iron Man multiplying them. Um, so it was going to be really hard for them to win. And so not a four cube win, but that is a two cube retreat. That is three and oh, let's see how many we can get in a row. I'm going to try for five or six. Um, and if so, this deck list so far, at least has felt really solid. All right. Next up, we have dot dot dot, which was the last the final boss from our last video, actually on TLSG. And so I match up with a lot of the same kind of players. Um, and it is awfully, it is an awfully rough road here. Um, but we try and find deck lists that, that work regardless. Um, and so with our limited pool, using only one pool three card, we try to find a way to still overcome those really common, really strong pool three focused decks. Um, and so this one's going to be a good, kind of a good comparison. So let's start by playing Sunspot into Los Diablo space. We hope that they don't play a card, but they end up playing the hood. I, I wonder if they're running like a debris junk deck. Um, which would end up sending us the hood, or if they're running a destruction deck, which would end up keeping the hood over there and end up destroying it. So we get Project Pegasus. We get seven power to use here. So I think we keep our Magneto as like a mystery. I think we keep it as like a secret last turn play. I'm going to go with an Iron Man and a Lizard. That is probably going to eventually, over the course of the game, try to 
make them want to try to cap out this location, the Project Pegasus lane, uh, because that would reduce our Lizard's power by three, and with the Iron Man effect, it would reduce the overall power by six in the lane. Um, but if they drop any three or four cost cards there, we can pull them out with Magneto on that last turn um, as kind of a surprise way to make sure that our Lizard stays intact. Ooh, and so they cap out the Los Diablos base. So is it a couple of like low cost cards and then um, and then a Carnage? So that's the Deathlock, which is a, a decent a decent play. They have two cards in hand currently, and then the Demon. Oh my gosh! So they pushed a lot of power into Los Diablos base. Into what? <laughs> what just happened? Um. So they win, they win Los Diablos base hands down, right? Um, there's no competing for that location unless we had a Shang-Chi. No, Shang-Chi wouldn't hit it. Um, Los Diablos base may destroy TVA. If it doesn't, we're going to try to potentially have enough of an advantage or an upside to still win that location. Okay, so Los Diablos base does kill the, the middle location, not the TVA. So this will be the last turn, should be the last turn that we have. We have four power that we can play into the TVA lane. I think that we're going to go with a Storm play. I think we benefit more from kind of staying in this game long term than they do. And so let's go with the Storm play. We have Nightcrawler there. I bet they play, ooh, they play a Killmonger. So we actually would have overcame their power levels. Super interesting. Um, okay. But they do only have two resources in hand. If one of those is a death, that could end up being, that could end up feeling pretty bad. Um, we don't have a good resource to play into the flooded lane, so I'm just going to play Claw as a way to push six power over there. We're going to hope that that's enough. If not, we can pull the Killmonger out with Magneto. If we can win the Ruins and the flooded location and just pull some of their resources over, I guess we don't have Killmonger to trigger anymore. And then we have Venom. We do have Venom that we can target here. Um, and so it, Venom is only actually only five power. We don't even necessarily need to target him. We don't necessarily need to target him, but I was going to I was going to target it anyways. I was going to do a Magneto into mid and pull him over. He'd be five power here, but our 12 power would be doubled by Iron Man. Um, so we'd end up having a really big middle location and then the flooded location was ours for the taking. And so we were able to finesse that into a two cube victory instead of just a one um, by changing TVA. But we did have the win at the end of turn four. All right. So next up, we have just Alex and we just dropped an eight cube match to them um they had the, they were running cerebro 2 so we know to look out for that um we just i didn't see the cerebro 2 i wasn't paying attention to that potential play line i honestly didn't think i'd run into it this early on um so i wasn't even looking for it so we do need to watch out for them having something like storm uh brood and then cerebro coming in at the very end they also had uh, had a goose all of which we need to look out for and be ready to kind of counterplay around. So they have the Nightcrawler, they have Scorpion, um, which kind of aligns with what we have. We have Scorpion, but that impacts every single card that they have that is no longer going to be able to get buffed up by the Cerebro play. Um, so I think that's absolutely fine for us. We could change Bar with No Name with Storm to give ourselves an additional space to play. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna we're gonna change bar with no name. I I know that we have resources in Lemuria already, but this way they don't have cards already played in in bar with no name or what will be the flooded location, and so maybe we can get kind of that sneaky upside on them from that location. Oh, Muir Island ruins their Cerebro buff as well. That is an instant snap. Unless they have a way to counteract this location this turn, it's really really bad for them because as soon as one of these cards get buffed up, it is no longer gonna be a Cerebro two game it's going to be a cerebro three game and then only these cards are going to be impacted and so let's go ahead and lock the jessica jones into the flooded location Ooh, hoo, hoo. interesting they do a korg and iceman um, which both got hit by our goo or by our scorpion and then they drop a goose so we are going to have more power than they have here their cerebro is not going to be able to help them um, even if they move their nightcrawler over i don't think it's going to be quite enough so now the question starts becoming do we play our claw to push even more power over into the flooded lane. Because I think even if they move a, a Nightcrawler over, I don't think they'll have enough power. Or do we start stacking some of our power in Lemuria? And if so, this play line is going to be a little bit better than the Claw play line. And so let's go ahead and go with that. We're going to lock that in into the left-hand side. I think we have a really good shot at winning the flooded location. Even if they drop Cerebro, it is only going to impact these cards. Of course, they'll be able to move their Nightcrawler over. 
But as long as this location stays as is, then the Mr. Sinister and Sinister Clone will buff up, and Nightcrawler will only be a four power card. All right, and so I'm going to push power over into the far right flooded location because I think they'll move their Nightcrawler over there, um, and we're going to need to be able to counteract that 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 potential tie. So let's go with that play over there. They play a card into the flooded location. Let's just hope that it's not enough to overcome our power push that we have currently. Um, and so, yeah, the Cerebro is going to buff up the Mr. Sinister, Sinister Clone. Currently, it does Nightcrawler, but as soon as Muir Island takes effect, that will take it away from their Nightcrawler as well. So we win the left and the right lane. We regain our eight cubes from the Cerebro 2 play, knowing what decklist they had and what locations kind of hurt them the most was much more advantageous than going into it blind. All right, so next up we have King Raya's. The first location's Murder World, not fantastic for us, but we do we can wait. We have Angela, we have some decent power cards to push it up. Um, maybe we can draw into Storm, which is gonna be which is gonna be great. Um, and actually, let's snap early. We're gonna be able to have the Angela in the Murder World lane. They're gonna think we went crazy. We can then follow that up with a storm that way we're not going to lose either of those cards and we should have a two card advantage on them in the murder world location and so let's go ahead and lock that in i think that's worth an early snap that gives us a pretty good lane advantage in murder world right off the bat and then oh my gosh and then we could do jessica jones there as well if we needed to i kind of want to play jessica jones into central park and then do our iron man and our magneto there um, or maybe we do Jessica Jones here. We do Magneto and Iron Man into nowhere um, to push a decent amount of power into that location. So they didn't play any cards. Interesting. What are they snapping about? Since Jessica Jones isn't going to get the upside from her own reveal ability here. Actually, no. Let's go ahead and do Jessica Jones into Central Park. We can then do... Wow, they push a lot of power into the flooded location. Um, they rotate two cards with Lockjaw, so it's going to be a very kind of Hail Mary. Which they will probably end up getting, right? So our Magneto is going to be able to target both the Lockjaw and the Thor to pull them out of this location so that we can win the Flooded location. But in the process, we need to be able to win one of the other lanes. Um, and so for us, that is going to look... That is, we're going to have to rely on, um, we're going to have to rely on Central Park. We're going to push power over into that lane since we don't have two slots. We can't play Iron Man. We're going to have to rely on that being interesting. Hmm. So we're going to have to rely on Central Park being able to be the trigger for our own reveal. Now, the issue that we're running into is that they can't play their Mjolnir that they just drew into their hand, their Wasp either, that they just drew into their hand into nowhere because the own reveal won't trigger. So I anticipate something like a Mjolnir and an Odin here, which would, up, which would end up being 17 power. The Magneto play would make sure that we still win this one. They could play their Wasp here, but they wouldn't win. So even if we don't pull cards over, we would win Nowhere and Central Park. I think we're okay. Um, I do anticipate the Mjolnir and probably an Odin, which would make this lane really, really big. Um, but as long as we can overcome their extra power in Nowhere, we should be okay. And so... I believe it's uh, Mjolnir, and then it's Odin, and then it's Wasp into Nowhere, which is not going to be enough power. It's only a one power push. And so then they do have the Odin, but that is, of course, not enough to come up over in Central Park um, because we have the, the large Jessica Jones and Magneto play and the Claw pushing the additional six power over, and then Claw is enough to keep the Nowhere location locked down. We called that play 2AT. Um, and so that is definitely worth an eight cube victory. That is where we are going to end the in the video today. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Overall, the deck list feels pretty solid. There are going to be some matchups that you may want to tactically retreat from. But overall, as far as just having one pull three, if Magneto is your only card, this deck list feels pretty good. Um, it has a lot of kind of it has a decent amount of counterplay, being able to force the opponent into a very specific play path, being able to have a large power output on the very last turn. Overall, it feels very solid. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. If you do want more interaction with, with me or with my community, we do have a Discord that is linked in the description below. Uh, make sure to jump in there. We do notifications whenever a new video goes live, whenever we go live. So if you want to check that out, the link is in the, is in the description below. As always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.